All right, it's time to f- listen to what Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson have to say about why well, don't leftists like facts. So Jordan, you were speaking a moment ago about the, the sort of lack of meaning that people are looking for, particularly young men. And it really is a big thing that young men seem to have lost meaning. Postmodernism killed the, the scientific rationalist world. And the postmodernists have decided to substitute for that a certain utopian vision of the remolding of American society in, in terms of what they call equity, but, but really amounts to tribal dynamics. And you see this over and over, the, the radical left pushing its own version of utopianism. Classical liberals have been wrong-footed, I think, by the need for something more fulfilling, which is why classical liberalism always relied on an unspoken assumption that you were going to find meaning in your family, you were going to find meaning in religious community, you were going to find meaning in bettering your social life outside of government. But when that unspoken understanding just dissipated, when, when religion started to, to fall apart, all that was left was, well, let's just be rational with one another. There's not much inspiring there. And I think that's why you see that ac- across the board. They will literally use everything they can. It's like classical liberal. I'm a libertarian. I'm a centrist. I'm a fence sitter. It's like, what is wrong? Just say you're a fucking conservative, dog. Just say you're a Republican. It's not that hard to admit. They just cannot. They literally cannot and will not admit that they are actually fucking Republicans. Like they're so desperate to find anything else. A drive toward irrationalism, uh, a certain level of romanticism dominating the society to the point where irrationalism is much more prized than rationalism. If you make a, a rational point, if you cite data, very often this is now. Dude, motherfucker will be like, I'm a classical liberal, which means I'm a liberal from the time when like people had slaves. Um, okay. Like he wants to live in that world. And then he'll turn around and be like, I'm irrational and my enemies want irrationalism. Now considered not only in politic, but, but damaging and dangerous. The other thing that, that ideology does and the the radical leftists are all also very good at this is that it provides you with a locale a convenient locale for the uh existence of evil if you reflexively identify the patriarchy with evil well first of all that's a powerful idea independent of its broad merit dude my favorite thing is when you're a disruptive thinker and what you do in your endless endeavors of being a disruptive thinker is like Look at all of the prior power dynamics, and instead of saying they're evil, say they're good. It's awesome. Like, dude, you're already admitting that that's what, like, that's what they've been doing this entire time. You don't have anything new to say. You're not a brave thinker for, like, siding with capitalism. Oh, oh, look at me. I'm so brave. I'm being attacked for my good ideas that are disruptive and crazy, like... Capitalism, good. Communism, bad. I'm crying. Patriarchy has been vilified for far too long. It's like, where? Well, what do you mean, how? How? How has it been fucking vilified? Because a bunch of, like, uh, uh, like non-binary college freshmen decided to, to say, like, patriarchy bad? Is that how we vilified it? Like, what the fuck do you mean? It's still a patriarchal system. It's, a, it's true. Now, it's not the only truth, and it's not it's the true. complete truth. But it's true. The reason it's true is because every hierarchical system, hierarchical system degenerates, tends to degenerate in the direction of power. All hierarchical systems are less than they could be. And that's partly because of the possibility that power and deceit will corrupt them, but also partly because we're willfully blind and deceitful in our own personal lives. And so when you tell young people that the cause of the trouble they see around them in the world, and maybe even the disquiet in their own heart, is the malevolent inadequacy of their society, that rings true. And they don't hear the rest of the story, you know, and it's the rest of the story that I've been trying to tell. They don't hear the story that, yeah, don't forget about the evil and corruption that exists in your own heart. Jordan Peterson is is the best at fucking just deconstructing radical and, and rugged individualism to its very core, okay? He is just the most conservative motherfucker on the planet. It is ridiculous. He literally will strip conservatism to its bare bones and describe it to you like he's telling you something entirely different. Like, nothing he's saying right now is any different than people who say, it's not the system's fault, it's your own, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, Think about the evil in your own heart, okay? That's it. He can dance around that idea by using, you know, uh, supposedly neutral language. Like, you know, he'll use, like, uh, academic language to, to basically sanitize what he's saying. But straight up, all he's doing is repackaging conservative uh, propaganda to you while establishing his, uh, his, his like, intellectual prowess. But 
the story that corruption exists in hierarchical structure and that that's a consequence of malevolence, the malevolent use of power and deceit, that's true. So it's very motivating, especially if you're young and you're looking totally. for an adventure. Now, it's totally. It's so motivating. It's so motivating, but also at the same time, like, you know, you're not motivated, right? I mean, obviously, they're not making any fucking change. You can't. I thought that it was uh, I thought it was liberating that uh, you're you're basically not even fucking doing anything individually. You're not focusing on on self-determination. You're not focusing on like individually bettering yourself and hyper focusing on systemic problems and you're shifting blame. You're abdicating responsibility away from yourself over to the back to the system. Right. But no, all of a sudden it's very motivating. It's also too convenient, which is one of its tri tremendous dangers, because unless you're taught to look within and identify the malevolence there as the primary moral obligation, then you now have an excuse and a moral justification to take out. Hi ho, hi ho! It's quote mining. We go, yeah. No, uh, Jordan B. Peterson is actually a profound intellectual. You're correct, and I'm simply just quote mining and putting words in his mouth. And he's not just like a regular old conservative who also simultaneously happens to appear alongside conservatives exclusively, goes on the fucking Turning Point USA, uh, goes on the Turning Point USA uh, conservative platform, talks about how women in the workplace and like sexual liberation has been devastating for women, but like uses pussy footing language. So you don't even actually understand like that he's literally saying that, or at least he always gives you an intellectual out by asking a question simply or establishing multiple premises for you to arrive at that conclusion on your own without him actually ever, you know, fully saying it with his chest, or when he even fully does say it with his chest, he'll still leave you to uh, interpret it differently depending on who you're arguing with. Uh, and also, on top of that, he's literally just a fucking oil lobbyist at this point, but, you know, I, I just, he's, he's far beyond... Uh, my level of intellectual promise, so I can't understand that he's just repeating oil lobbyist talking points to you. Everything about you that's unexamined on the demonic enemy. And of course, that's that that, that degenerates with extraordinary rapidity as we as we've seen over and over and over. So it's up to the it's up to the centrists on both sides to to deal with this. I've been talking to a lot of the optimist rationalist types on my podcast. One of the things we discussed consistently was the difficulty in promoting the message that all three of these men are very aware of, which is that from a material perspective- Dude, even Ben Shapiro is like, I'm so fucking bored right now. I'm literally only putting you on here because it means clicks, okay? It means I can like reach back to an audience and potentially like revitalize your image and it'll, ter it'll pay dividends uh, in the future. Straight up, like straight up, you can see it. He's just like, oh, this sucks. And it does suck. He's so boring. He's so fucking boring. That's the worst part about Jordan Peterson. It's not even the fact that like his misinterpretation, his willingful misinterpretation created significantly more transphobia in Canada. It wasn't even, it, that wasn't even it. Like that wasn't the worst thing he did in my opinion. It's just because he is so fucking pathetically boring. Holy shit. The fact that all these fatherless stem cell fucking weirdos would turn around and be like, look at this guy. What a prophet he is. Because they have never actually had a single fucking, uh, just, just a single piece of interaction with, like, the, the arts in any meaningful capacity be before this fucking guy came in. That, like, they, they think he's the god. Like, he's just, you know, showing them the way. Anyways, one of the things we discussed consistently was the diff- The fucking weirdo who cries about Frozen, you know what I mean? He, like, literally watches Frozen and cries. Difficulty in promoting- the message that all three of these men are very aware of, which is that from a material perspective, in terms of absolute privation, humanity is way better off on virtually every dimension you could possibly measure than ever. And, and most of that improvement has occurred in the last 40 years, and it's been revolutionary in its speed. Now, I talked to Russell Brandt about this, and I'm bringing him up for a reason. He's, he's a lefty by temperament and by heart. And his first objection, but he's very thoughtful and quick, his first objection, you know, I pointed out all this data showing that by every possible objective measure, everything is way better than it was certainly 100 years ago, but certainly even 20 years ago. Bro, this is so dumb. It's such a dumb argument, dude. Of course, 
Of course things are better, dude. There's exponential growth. Our living conditions have improved as a consequence of technological achievements that would happen regardless of whether or not we live in a capitalist or socialist organization of the economy that is completely devoid of the economic organization of society, okay? But that does not mean that things could be much, much better, okay? That does not mean that we should just halt progress. Holy fuck, dude. Like, they, okay, so, so what? Like, yeah, your situation is better. Now you know, uh, now you have at least some kind of, like, ailment, right? If you have, you have some kind of cure now. Uh, as opposed to 40, 50 years ago, when if you, uh, if you got shot in the leg, like, we didn't even know how to fucking tie it up, right? And you just immediately died. So what? Should you halt progress then? Should we not move uh, further from the fucking Dark Ages, Middle Ages, whatever? It's so stupid. And he said, well, what about disparity of distribution. So there's the problem of absolute level of wealth, let's say, that's improving, but there is still tremendous disparity. And of course that, that is fair enough. You could even point out that the role of the left is to provide a conscientious voice that's constantly attending to the fact of continuing disparity regardless of absolute level of wealth. And fair enough, but having said all that, it's a great mystery that incremental optimism is not sufficiently motivating and you can't just wish human nature is going to change it's not going to change we got to tell a better dude that is the that's the democratic line like that's literally the democratic party he's describing the democratic party better story and i also think that's why i'm a target i think is because i am actually trying to tell a better story and i'm actually having some success with it so i totally agree with that and and that really does bring us to the book because one of the things that folks should know about all of your books is that they are very Dog intimate, shit. very They're personal. They're doo-doo. They're caca. They're terrible. Now you talk about yourself, but you also speak in, in a way that most writers do not. You use second-person pronouns. I mean, you speak directly to the reader. You say, you feel this way. You think this way. And a lot of people read that and say, I do think that way. This is a person who's speaking directly to me in a way that you know, mainstream political books very often do not. They consider me sort of a widget in whatever ideology they're pushing or or they, they're considering the, the value of systems or not systems, but you sort of end around that. And I think that in many ways, that's what men, members of the left find so, so threatening is because if you're a member of the left and you believe that all individuals are essentially just the outgrowth. He's, I mean, you're describing a cult leader. ...of institutions, and therefore that all change by individuals is going to be insufficient and that it must be societal change that, that creates individual change. You're a threat because you're telling people, well, you know, the systems can certainly get better. But the main threat to you is you. And that is a deeply threatening message to people. And if people find fulfillment in Dude, I know. Leftists fucking hate self-improvement. Leftists love to live in filth, dude. Live in fucking piss and shit and filth. Now, of course, I say this, but, like, there are literally people in the chat who are like that. And, like, to you, I say, ew, stop living in caca and pee-pee, okay? Like, figure it out. Take a shower. Seriously, like... Even in this community, which is like a leftist community, right? There are, there are only like a couple incels who uh, yesterday when we were talking about like, you know, self-improvement and whatnot that immediately stopped me and said like, wait a minute, what do you mean self-improvement? Isn't that exactly like telling a poor person they too have the means to overcome capitalism? Like they literally were just like, no, fuck, fuck self-improvement. Which by the way, incels, not leftists. Remember, they themselves are not actually leftists. They are fucking right-wingers. They're reactionary. So only in the mind of the reactionary does the leftist believe that, uh, you know, self-improvement is, is not something you can do. Then the left really does have a problem because if people start improving their lives within the system and not blaming the system for their problems and instead recognizing that, that they can improve their lives, that's what mem members of the left hate most of all. You know, you talk about in the book, Jordan, the fact that people are constantly coming up to you and they're saying things like, you know, I... I was leading a, a dissolute life. One thing that I think a lot of people get wrong, even sometimes leftists, but definitely just a lot of people in general get wrong because of re the reactionary propaganda against it, is this notion that leftism is just about collectivism, okay? And it's not about individual liberties. You are missing the point. Even Karl Marx wrote about the individual liberties and a fulfilling life that every individual has or the individual liberties that every single person should have but only can we can only unlock these individual liberties whether you want to you know fish in the morning and write poetry at night or fucking think about philosoph philosophy because you're a fucking nerd whatever the fuck you want you can only achieve that that future through collective action at your book i started taking your advice and i've turned it around and now i'm doing much better in life and you know i'm 
blessed to have much the same experience from a lot of people who listen to the show, people who have been homeless, who now have graduated Harvard Law School, people who were single moms and and then de- and then decided to to take and pop. the left fears them. <laughs> the left fears a homeless person who just bought a house. It, it, this is something you can calculate. OK, it's called upward social mobility. Okay, the likelihood that you will be better off than your fucking parents. Okay, when you look at the United States of America right now, our upward social mobility is literally worse than all of the other comparable OECD nations. Straight up. Not exactly a a great pitch for the land of the free where, you know, everyone can pursue the American dream, right? Just like in the words of George Carlin, you know, it's a it's a dream. The American dream is just a dream because you have to be asleep to to experience it. College course and and figure out their lives, people who've made mistakes and turned their mistakes around. And to me, those are inspirational stories. I think that because those inspirational stories exist, that I think is why people find you to be such a threat. It's because so many people are inspired by the stuff that you say and change their life individually without putting all of their ire and focus on a system that the left is mainly focused on tearing down. I defy anyone to go read 10,000 comments on my YouTube channels. And not- <laughs> Why would anybody do that, dude? What a fucking freak! <laughs> oh no! Not come away uh, with a much better, with a much refreshed view of human oh, he's gonna nature. Cry. He's gonna cry. He's gonna cry. The comments are, in the main, unbelievably positive, and not in- dog. That's a self-report, dude. If you have mostly positive comments under your YouTube section. That says more about you. You are where the evil is coming from then, okay? Because you go under any video. It could be like baby shark do 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 video. And there's people saying filthy ass shit underneath it. Those guys are literally pro you and anti everyone else, okay? In a naive sense, they're positive in a thoughtful sense and, and in a communal sense because the people who are making comments on the lectures are also commenting on each other. And there's ideological babble on both sides i would say that's probably five percent of the comments no one on the in the history of the planet has ever been like oh you think i'm a bad guy well read what my followers are saying about me in my youtube comments and uh, generally i believe they're written by people who didn't actually watch the lecture because they're o- often out of context but in any case 95 percent of the comments are thoughtful but also extremely positive, which is very rare in a social media comment landscape, which tends to be very, very toxic. And so I think that's absolutely great. And it certainly has that impact on me when I, when I read it. Um, but then here's something else that I- By the way, the funniest thing about this is that like, I have dealt with Jordan Peterson fans and they are some of the most annoying neck beards on the planet i mean they're in here sometimes like every time i bring up jordan peterson there used to be a time when they would just like come in to be like dude you're taking him out of context 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 it's so annoying in the media attacks that have been directed towards me they're not just directed towards me well first they're directed to who they think i am so that's kind of interesting to begin with but more than directed to me and more perniciously is that they're directed to those who are hypothetically following me. I don't regard myself as someone with followers. I regard myself as someone with viewers, listeners, and readers. But in any case, my typical follower, so goes the story, is a disaffected, angry, young, white male. And for a while, I, in some sense, pushed back against that and said, well, my audience is about 70% male, but YouTube skews male, so that's perhaps part of the reason. And I see... It's not 70, he's lying. It's 90. Just saying. No evidence that it's particularly limited racially or ethnically, especially when I watch, see my lecture crowds and when I meet people on the street. But, but then I started to realize that that was the wrong response. The right response is, why does it disturb you so much that there's a group of people who by your own admission are disaffected and angry and alienated and young, and I'm helping them and why is that exactly a problem? Dude, you're not helping anybody, bro. Like, you're not. You're just, you're, you're literally reinforcing conservative values within a base that is, like, super susceptible to that. You first, on the one hand, feed them self-help bullshit that, unfortunately... You know what, you know what the thing is that's different about Jordan Peterson, actually? I'll admit it. I think, like, a lot of the self-help stuff is just, like... There's a lot of self-help out there that it's, like, catering specifically towards women. But... 
there hasn't been like self-help outside of like um i'm not gonna say like outside of the capitalist framework because jordan peterson is a capitalist too obviously uh but like a lot of the self-help uh, that is uh, for men is is very much like how to make more money in the workplace type things right jordan peterson on the other hand is doing like the exact same kind of like bullshit self-help without like uh redirecting it to the gym or redirecting it to like how to make more money and and you know or or three how to get bitches what is it that i'm supposed to be doing with them just out of curiosity what do you think if you had your druthers would i ignore them would no one talk to them is that actually what you want well the answer seems quite clear that that is exactly what's wanted that's what's held forth because there's this implicit assumption in all of this critique that in my very act of aid, I'm doing something immoral. Immoral enough to be parodied, let's say, as Red Skull. And so just what the hell's going on here? It's like, why is that now uh, fodder for, for parody or slander, precisely? I mean, do you debate the fact that I'm helping? Well, you go read the comments yourself and see what you think. Why are they responding positively? Why did they come to my lectures, the biblical lectures even, which is very surprising, right? Because what the hell are men doing it a biblical lecture, especially young men, especially when they could go do anything else and they have to pay for it. It's like, what are they doing coming to this lecture? Well, you're a cult leader. Sorry. If the patriarchy is an evil ty tyranny, then the appropriate attitude towards any male ambition is to not treat it as ambition, but to treat it as nascent drive to tyrannical power, which is certainly what, uh, Foucault would recommend, for example, or Derrida, because it's all power. And so if you see some young man trying to stand mm. up and better himself in any dimension, you're not going to trust that. You're going to identify that as the manifestation of tyrannical power. Yeah, totally, dude. That's, that's so right. Leftists are always doing this. Leftists are like, oh, wow, you're bettering yourself? That's disgusting. Foucault would say... <laughs> Foucault and Derrida would say that that's a manifestation of power and therefore incorrect and wrong. That's, isn't that right, fellas? I mean, we're always doing that, right? Whenever someone in this chat says like, hey, son, you know, uh, you've encouraged me to lead a healthier, more positive life, lost like 30 pounds or whatever. Everyone's always like, yo, fuck you, dude. You fucking piece of shit. Imagine. Imagine trying to improve yourself and like working out every day. Fucking fuck. Fuck you, dude. Fucking idiot. That's not praxis. The opposite. And clearly, if the patriarchy is a malevolent tyrant, then any sign of the desire to contribute it to it should be at minimum not encouraged. But more subtly, criticized and discouraged at every possible opportunity. And that's our culture.